Chapters 29 to 33, Book 8, Volume 1 of Le Mort d'Arthur. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Tisto, T Y S T O dot com. Le Mort d'Arthur, Volume 1 by Sir Thomas Mallory. Book 8. Chapters 29 to 33. Chapter 29. Of the wedding of King Mark to La Belle Isode, and of Bragwain her maid, and of Palamides. And anon they were richly wedded with great noblesse. But ever, as the French book saith, Sir Tristram and La Belle Isode loved ever together. Then there was great jousts and great tourneying, and many lords and ladies were at that feast, and Sir Tristram was most praised of all other. Thus dured the feast long, and after the feast was done, within a little while after, by the assent of two ladies that were with Queen Isode, they ordained for hate and envy for to destroy Dame Brogwain that was maiden and lady unto la belle isode and she was sent into the forest for to fetch herbs and there she was met and bound feet and hand to a tree and so she was bounden three days and by fortune sir palamides found dame bragwain and there he delivered her from the death and brought her to a nunnery there beside for to be recovered when Isode the queen missed her maiden, wit ye well she was right heavy as ever was any queen, for of all earthly women she loved her best, the cause was for she came with her out of her country. And so upon a day Queen Isode walked into the forest to put away her thoughts, and there she went herself unto a well, and made great moan, and suddenly there came palamides to her and had heard all her complaint and said madame isode an ye will grant me my boon i shall bring you dame bragwine safe and sound and the queen was so glad of his proffer that suddenly unadvised she granted all his asking well madame said palamides i trust to your promise and if you will abide here half an hour I shall bring her to you. I shall abide you, said La Belle Isode. And Sir Palamides rode forth his way to that nunnery, and lightly he came again with Dame Bragwain. But by her good will she would not have come again, because for love of the queen she stood in adventure of her life. Notwithstanding, half against her will, she went with Sir Palamides unto the queen. And when the queen saw her, she was passing glad. Now, madam, said Sir Palamides, remember upon your promise, for I have fulfilled my promise. Sir Palamides, said the queen, I wot not what is your desire, but I will that we wit, howbeit I promised you largely, I thought none evil, nor I warn you, none evil will I do. Madam, said Sir Palamides, as at this time ye shall not know my desire, but before my lord your husband, there shall ye know that I will have my desire that ye have promised me. And therewith the queen departed, and rode home to the king, and Sir Palamides rode after her. And when Sir Palamides came before the king, he said, Sir king, I require you, as ye be a righteous king, that ye will judge me the right. Tell me your cause, said the king, and ye shall have right. Chapter 30 How Palamides demanded Queen Isode, and how Lambegus rode after to rescue her, and of the escape of Isode. Sir, said Palamides, I promised your Queen Isode to bring again Dame Bragwine that she had lost upon this covenant, that she should grant me a boon that I would ask, and without grudging other advisement she granted me. 
"'What say ye, my lady?' said the king. "'It is as he saith, so God me help,' said the queen. "'To say thee sooth, I promised him his asking, "'for love and joy that I had to see her.' "'Well, madam,' said the king, "'and if ye were hasty to grant him the boon he would ask, "'I will well that ye perform your promise.' Then, said Palamides, I will that you wit that I will have your queen to lead her and govern her, whereas me list. Therewith the king stood still, and bethought him of Sir Tristram, and deemed that he would rescue her, and then hastily the king answered, Take her with the adventures that shall fall of it, for I suppose thou wilt not enjoy her no while. As for that, said Palamides, I dare right well abide the adventure. And so, to make short tale, Sir Palamides took her by the hand, and said, Madam, judge not to go with me, for I desire nothing but your own promise. As for that, said the queen, I fear not greatly to go with thee, howbeit thou hast me at advantage upon my promise for I doubt not I shall be worshipfully rescued from thee. As for that, said Sir Palamides, be it as it be may. So Queen Isode was set behind Palamides, and rode his way. Anon the king sent after Sir Tristram, but in no wise he could be found, for he was in the forest a-hunting, for that was always his custom, but if he used arms to chase and to hunt in the forests. Alas, said the king, now I am shamed for ever, that by mine own assent my lady and my queen shall be devoured. Then came forth a knight, his name was Lambagus, and he was a knight of Sir Tristram. My lord, said this knight, sith ye have trust in my lord Sir Tristram, wit ye well for his sake I will ride after your queen and rescue her, or else I shall be beaten. Gramercy, said the king, as I live, Sir Lambagus, I shall deserve it. And then Sir Lambagus armed him, and rode after as fast as he might. And then within a while he overtook Sir Palamides, and then Sir Palamides left the queen. What art thou? said Palamides. Art thou Tristram? Nay, he said, I am his servant, and my name is Sir Lambagus. That me repenteth said Palamides, I had liefer thou hast been Sir Tristram. I believe you well, said Lambegus, but when thou meetest with Sir Tristram, thou shalt have thy hands full. And then they hurtled together, and all to brast their spears, and then they pulled out their swords, and hewed on helms and halberks. At the last Sir Palamides gave Sir Lambegus such a wound that he fell down like a dead knight to the earth. Then he looked after La Belle Isode, and then she was gone. He nist where. Wit ye well Sir Palamides was never so heavy. So the queen ran into the forest, and there she found a well, and therein she had thought to have drowned herself. And as good fortune would, there came a knight to her that had a castle nearby. His name was Adtherp. And when he found the queen in that mischief, he rescued her, and brought her to his castle. And when he wist what she was, he armed him, and took his horse, and said he would be avenged upon Palamides. And so he rode on till he met with him, and there Sir Palamides wounded him sore, and by force he made him to tell the cause why he did battle with him, and how he had led the queen unto his castle. Now bring me there, said Palamides, or thou shalt die of my hands. Sir said Sir Adtherp, I am so wounded I may not follow, but ride you this way, and it shall bring you into my castle, and there within is the queen. Then Sir Palamides rode still till he came to the castle, and at a window La Belle Isode saw Sir Palamides, then she made the gates to be shut strongly, and when he saw he might not come within the castle, he put off his bridle and his saddle, and put his horse to pasture and set himself down at the gate like a man that was out of his wit that recked not of himself. 
Chapter 31 How Sir Tristram rode after Palamides, and how he found him and fought with him, and by the means of his ode the battle ceased. Now we turn unto Sir Tristram, that when he was come home, and wist La Belle Isode was gone with Sir Palamides, wit ye well he was wroth out of measure. Alas, said Sir Tristram, I am this day shamed. Then he cried to Governail, his man, Haste thee that I were armed and on horseback, for well I wot Lambegus hath no might nor strength to withstand Sir Palamides. Alas, that I have not been in his stead. So anon, as he was armed and horsed, Sir Tristram and Governail rode after into the forest, and within a while he found his knight Lambegus almost wounded to the death, and Sir Tristram bare him to a forester, and charged him to keep him well. And then he rode forth, and there he found Sir Anthorp sore wounded, and he told him how the queen would have drowned herself had he not been, and how for her sake and love he had taken upon himself to do battle with Sir Palamides. "'Where is my lady?' said Sir Tristram. "'Sir,' said the knight, "'she is sure enough within my castle, and she can hold her within it.' "'Gramercy,' said Sir Tristram, "'of thy great goodness.' and so he rode till he came nigh to that castle, and then Sir Tristram saw where Sir Palamides sat at the gate sleeping, and his horse pastured fast afore him. "'Now go thou, Governale,' said Sir Tristram, "'and bid him awake, and make him ready.' So Governale rode unto him, and said, "'Sir Palamides, arise, and take to thee thine harness.' But he was in such a study he heard not what Governale said. So Governale came again, and told Sir Tristram he slept, or else he was mad. "'Go thou again,' said Sir Tristram, "'and bid him arise, and tell him I am here, his mortal foe.' So Governale rode again, and put upon him the butt of his spear, and said, "'Sir Palamides, make thee ready, for wit ye well Sir Tristram hoveth yonder, and sendeth thee word he is thy mortal foe.' And therewithal Sir Palamides arose stilly, without words, and got his horse, and saddled him, and bridled him, and lightly he leapt upon, and got his spear in his hand, and either footred their spears, and hurtled fast together. And there Tristram smote down Sir Palamides over his horse's tail. Then lightly Sir Palamides put his shield afore him, and drew his sword. And there began strong battle on both parts, for both they fought for the love of one lady. And ever she lay on the walls, and beheld them, how they fought out of measure, and either were wounded passing sore. But Palamides was much sorer wounded. Thus they fought, tracing and traversing more than two hours, that well nigh for dole and sorrow La Belle Isode swooned. Alas, she said, that one I loved and yet do, and the other I love not. Yet it were great pity that I should see Sir Palamides slain, for well I know, by the time the end be done, Sir Palamides is but a dead knight. Because he is not christened, I would be loath that he should die a Saracen. And therewithal she came down and besought Sir Tristram to fight no more. Ah, madam, said he, what mean you? Will ye have me shamed? Well ye know I will be ruled by you. I will not your dishonour, said La Belle Isode, but I would that ye would, for my sake, spare this unhappy Saracen Palamides. Madam, said Sir Tristram, I will leave fighting at this time for your sake. Then she said to Sir Palamides, This shall be your charge, that thou shalt go out of this country while I am therein. I will obey your commandment, said Sir Palamides, the which is sore against my will. Then take thy way, said La Belle Isode, unto the court of King Arthur, and there recommend me unto Queen Guinevere, and tell her that I send her word that there be within this land but four lovers, that is, Sir Launcelot du Lake, and Queen Guinevere, and Sir Tristram de Lyons, and Queen Isode. 
Chapter thirty two How Sir Tristram brought Queen Isoude home, and of the debate of King Mark and Sir Tristram. And so Sir Palamides departed with great heaviness, and Sir Tristram took the queen and brought her again to King Mark, and then there was made great joy of her homecoming. Who was cherished but Sir Tristram? Then Sir Tristram let fetch Sir Lambegus his knight from the forester's house, and it was long or he was whole, but at the last he was well recovered. Thus they lived with joy and play a long while. But ever Sir Andred, that was nigh cousin to Sir Tristram, lay in a watch to wait betwixt Sir Tristram and La Belle Isoude, for to take them and slander them. So upon a day Sir Tristram talked with La Belle Isoude in a window, and that espied Sir Andred, and told it to the king. Then King Mark took a sword in his hand, and came to Sir Tristram, and called him false traitor, and would have stricken him. But Sir Tristram was nigh him, and ran under his sword, and took it out of his hand. And then the king cried, Where are my knights and my men? I charge you, slay this traitor. But at that time there was not one who would move for his words. When Sir Tristram saw that there was not one who would be against him, he shook the sword to the king, and made countenance as though he would have stricken him. And then King Mark fled, and Sir Tristram followed him, and smote upon him five or six strokes, flatling on the neck, that he made him to fall upon the nose. And then Sir Tristram yeed his way, and armed him, and took his horse and his man, and so he rode into that forest. And there upon a day Sir Tristram met with two brethren that were knights with King Mark, and there he struck off the head of the one, and wounded the other to the death, and he made him to bear his brother's head in his helm unto the king, and thirty more there he wounded. And when that knight came before the king to say his message, he there died afore the king and the queen. Then King Mark called his counsel unto him, and asked advice of his barons, what was best to do with Sir Tristram. Sir, said the barons, in especial Sir Dinas, the seneschal, Sir, we will give you counsel for to send for Sir Tristram, for we will that ye wit many men will hold with Sir Tristram, and he will hard bestead. And sir, said Sir Dinas, Ye shall understand that Sir Tristram is called peerless and makeless of any Christian knight, and of his might and hardiness we knew none so good a knight, but if it be Sir Launcelot de Lake. And if he depart from your court, and go to King Arthur's court, wit ye well he will get him such friends there, that he will not set by your malice. And therefore, sir, I counsel you to take him to your grace. I will well, said the king, that he be sent for, that we may be friends. Then the baron sent for Sir Tristram under a safe conduct, and so when Sir Tristram came to the king he was welcome, and no rehearsal was made, and there was game and play. And then the king and the queen went a-hunting, and Sir Tristram. Chapter 33. How Sir Lamorak jousted with thirty knights, and how Sir Tristram, at the request of King Mark, smote his horse down. The king and the queen made their pavilions and their tents in that forest beside a river, and there was daily hunting and jousting, for there were ever thirty knights ready to joust unto all them that came in at that time, and there by fortune came Sir Lamorak de Gallus and Sir Driant, and there Sir Driant jousted right well, but at the last he had a fall. Then Sir Lamorak proffered to joust, and when he began he fared so with the thirty knights that there was not one of them but that he gave him a fall, and some of them were sore hurt. I marvel, said King Mark, what knight he is that doth such deeds of arms. Sir, said Sir Tristram, I know him well for a noble knight as few now be living, and his name is Sir Lamorak de Gallus. 
"'It were great shame,' said the king, "'that he should go thus away, "'unless that some of you meet with him better.' "'Sir,' said Sir Tristram, "'me seemeth it were no worship for a nobleman "'to have ado with him, "'and for because at this time he hath done over much "'for any mean knight living. "'Therefore, as me seemeth, "'it were great shame and villainy "'to tempt him any more at this time, "'insomuch as he and his horse are weary both. "'For the deeds of arms that he hath done this day, "'and they be well considered, "'it were enough for Sir Launcelot Lake. "'As for that,' said King Mark, "'I require you, as you love me and my lady the queen, La Belle Isode, "'take your arms and joust with Sir Lamorac de Galles. "'Sir,' said Sir Tristram, "'you bid me do a thing that is against knighthood, "'and well I can deem that I shall give him a fall, "'for it is no mastery, for my horse and I be fresh both, "'and so is not his horse and he, "'and wit ye well that he will take it for great unkindness.' for ever one good knight is loath to take another at disadvantage. But because I will not displease you, as you require me, so will I do, and obey your commandment. And so Sir Tristram armed him, and took his horse, and put him forth, and there Sir Lamorak met him mightily, and what with the might of his own spear, and of Sir Tristram's spear, Sir Lamorak's horse fell to the earth, and he sitting in the saddle, then anon, as lightly as he might, he avoided the saddle and his horse, and put his shield afore him, and drew his sword. And then he bade Sir Tristram, Alight, thou knight, an thou durst. Nay, said Sir Tristram, I will no more have ado with thee, for I have done to thee overmuch unto my dishonour and to thy worship. As for that, said Sir Lamorak, I can thee no thank. Since thou hast forjousted me on horseback, I require thee, and I beseech thee, and thou be Sir Tristram, fight with me on foot. I will not so, said Sir Tristram, and wit ye well my name is Sir Tristram de Lyons, and well I know ye be Sir Lamorak de Galles, and this that I have done to you was against my will, but I was required thereto. But to say that I will do at your request at this time, I will have no more ado with you, for me shameth of that I have done. As for shame, said Sir Lamorak, on thy part or on mine, bear thou it an thou wilt, for though a mare's son hath failed me, now a queen's son shall not fail thee, and therefore, an thou be such a knight as men call thee, I require thee a light and fight with me. Sir Lamorak, said Sir Tristram, I understand your heart is great, and cause why ye have to say thee sooth, for it would grieve me an any knight should keep him fresh and then to strike down a weary knight, for that knight nor horse was never formed that alway may stand or endure, and therefore, said Sir Tristram, I will not have ado with you, for me forethinketh of that I have done. As for that, said Sir Lamorak, I shall quit you, and ever I see my time. End of Book 8, Chapters 29 to 33.